So now the last thing I want to do, now that we are done, is I'm going to go back and revisit our repository on GitHub and recommit all, all these changes we've made. So, oops, caps lock. So first, let's check the status, and we see that we have modified this main.py file, which makes sense. We made a lot of changes there. There's also this main.pyc file, which, um, don't worry too much about this. So what this is is um, the compiled Python code. So there's source code, which, which is what we humans write and read, uh, which has to get translated into machine code. It's like a more primitive and not very readable version of code. In fact, there are multiple layers of this, and it gets progressively less and less readable all the way down to the bottom, where eventually you have ones and zeros on your machine. And that is the actual uh, code that, that your computer is able to work with. That's the level on which the computer likes to think, but not the level on which we like to think. So when we write source code like this, there's a whole process by which, and it varies from language to language in, in, in the context, but there's always a process by which that source code gets translated down into machine code. And so here we have an artifact of that which got, I guess, automatically generated um, in the process of um, running this through Google App Engine or something. So you don't have to worry about this. Um, and ideally, actually, ideally it shouldn't even be in our Git repository. And there's a thing you can do in Git to ignore certain files, and that's probably what we ultimately, in a, in, in a real scenario, would, would want to do. But um, because Git is new to you guys, um, I'm going to say for now not to worry about that and just go ahead and commit this, this other file. So I'm going to add both of them. I'm going to commit and say. Uh, implemented um, lucky number in random fortune and refresh button or something. That seems like a reasonable commit. This is actually a very large commit. Uh, larger than would normally be the case. Normally, we would probably have been, we would have been committing as we went. Um, maybe in a future video, I'll do something a little more realistic like that rather than waiting until we're all the way done with our project and then committing everything at once. But uh, it's a little simpler to just do that for now. Um, also, notice uh, this weird stuff. You presumably you aren't going to see that. It's just because I'm on a computer that um, isn't my my real computer. So I have not configured this computer, uh, configured Git on this computer with some settings, and it's kind of warning me about that. So, but so you can ignore that. So we have truly committed this. I will check again the status. We're good. And then the last thing you are going to be asked to do is to push all of your code up to a repository on GitHub. So um, you should already have a little bit of practice with that, but I will walk through that process as well here. I'm going to go to GitHub, make sure you're signed in. I'm going to make a new repository and give it the same name. Here's the URL for this repository I just created. So what I need to do now is configure this local repo to have a reference to the remote one that I just made, which I can do with git remote add. Add a new remote is what we're saying. Oops, I forgot to give it a name. I have to give this a local name, so I'm going to 
give it the standard name of origin. Now we have that remote there, which I can check. Here it is, origin. Now I can push to it. Git push origin, the master branch of origin. And again, because I haven't configured that, it's going to ask me my password, but you should be able to do it without typing your password. And here we see a message that it seems to have worked. And let me just refresh. And here it is. Here's our stuff. So that's how you get your code up on GitHub in a repository. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that was helpful and good luck on your continued work in the class.